While Colorado's Big 12 championship and college football playoff hopes got put on life support against Kansas over the weekend, Shador Sanders solidified himself as the quarterback one in this draft class. Let's dig into the tape and talk about what makes him the clear number one, in my opinion. Over the last month of the college football season, Shador Sanders has done a lot of good things, a lot of winning streaks, a lot of stats, a lot of touchdowns, but there's a lot to his game that I enjoy watching, the things he does with the accuracy of the football all of these things that he does, and then there's some things that he's got to work on, right? We all know that there are no perfect prospects. I think that there are. there's a clear number one and two quarterback in this class. It's Shador Sanders at one and Cam Ward at two for me. Now, initially, one thing that you're going to have to do in the NFL outside of the quick game and the RPO stuff is make clear, consistent progression reads. He does this on a consistent basis. Left side of the field, you have both receivers kind of running slant routes here. May want to post, want to slant, but they're going towards the middle of the field. On the right-hand side, you've got a clear-out route here down the right-hand sideline, an out route, and then the running back coming out to the flat here off of play action, a little bit of play action. So initially, you're going to play against a little bit of a cover one defense here where Colorado, excuse me, Texas Tech is going to be matching out number 10 right here is going to actually bail out over into the middle of the field part where he's going to be that kind of floater underneath and you get this safety come out here and it's man coverage underneath and Shador Sanders is going to look to his right first and then go through his progressions back to the middle of the field and then hit that that almost dig route from Travis Hunter on the left side so what I like about this is again it's calm it's collected he's got nice pocket awareness there's nothing doing on the with the pocket here so he's going right to left and then he, he hits Travis Hunter honestly away from the pressure right you've got defender coming this way and he's going to put the ball a little bit away right you've got going to kind of trying to lead Travis Hunter away from that so if you have that those defenders coming in he's going to throw the football away and hopefully he can make a play after that right there so makes first guy miss then you get that trail defender and the safety coming on top so ball placement going through his progressions are one of the big things and big pluses to his game you see right there Tra traveling with his eyes right to left and then hitting Travis Hunter, putting it on that back hip pocket so he can kind of make a play after the catch if given the opportunity. Third and 12 right here. He is a one of his best attributes, in my opinion, is throwing the football over the middle of the field in a consistent fashion. This one is a very well-timed play, well-timed throw, and Shador knows, knows exactly where he's going with the football. One thing I like about this play here is, is that you get to see that they're over here mugging up the middle of the field, right, or just the, the line of scrimmage. So you've got a bunch of players up here. Looks like it could be an overload blitz to the right, and then they all bail out. So with this type of play here, they're going to get a kind of a bender down the seam right here, and the defense just kind of rotates back. So you've got like two high here rotating here and that's exactly where Shador sees that bender come out right underneath the, the middle of the field right there so right there nice well-timed throw it's not a ton of anticipation he he sees it coming he reads the defense well and he puts it right where it needs to be out in front of that receiver and inside of that uh, safety over top there well-timed again you see that defender as soon as this def underneath defender right here kind of stops making contact with the receiver and then he clears into that next level that's a really nice layered throw in between that linebacker and then right in front of the safety, allowing the receiver to go make a play. So those two things, making progressions with timing, accuracy, and then getting the football to his playmakers, letting them make plays, is one of the best attributes about Shador Sanders. This right here is where I start to have some of the, the, the questions about his game. This is just a basic throw to an out route. We saw that clear out route with the route with the you know the out route underneath it and you see right there the receiver after he catches it he kind of takes the football and throws up so he has a tendency to come over the throw right so he is just a short drop and his throwing mechanics the arm over it's more of that not, not, that, not that three quarter arm slot that we see from some of the other quarterbacks this one comes up and down right that's where he usually gets the majority of his throws so when you see a quarterback come up over a little bit, you see that arm rotating up, and that ball tends to die a little bit. The reason for that is when you have a throw that's coming out with that top-down motion, the nose of the football tends to come down as well. And that's right here. You want to see him throw into this, but as soon as it's released, that the nose of that football is going down. So instead of this going you know, up and kind of just trailing, 
to the receiver, to the out, the nose, the trajectory of this football is already going down because of that arm slot. And sometimes he does have the three quarter and he doesn't really do a lot with his, the different ways he will throw the football. But oftentimes you see that it's the arm over. So the throwing mechanics paired with some of his lackadaisical footwork can create some of those throws where they just die on the end, specifically to the other outside parts of the field. And then here, this is where I talk about his lackadaisical footwork in the pocket. You see, he just kind of like drifts into the back. He doesn't have a set cadence, and that contributes to throws down the field dying as well. So right here, this is, again, you get got a wide open receiver that goes down the field. Watch Shador Sanders as he's getting into his drop, right? It's there's no real cadence to it. He's more drifting, just kind of falling backwards, standing up top. And if he were to get back there quickly, then you can feel this pressure coming off here and step up into this throw. But because it's a little bit slower, there's no real cadence or urgency, sense of urgency to get into the back there. He has to now bend backwards. So he's generating the velocity to throw this football by manipulating himself. You see this arc right here. This is him bending backwards and having to throw the football now down to, down the sideline or down the, the field here, and it takes off the throw. This dies right here where the receiver has to now come underneath it, and that's where you see him not be able to make it into the end zone. This should be a clear-cut touchdown for Shador Sanders, but because he is slow getting back and he doesn't step up into the throw you have a pocket here if he were to have gotten back and again to the drop step up into this throw he's going to put this on the money down the field for a touchdown but because he doesn't he ends up kind of coiling backward and then throwing forward so instead of it being a hip turn it's more of a hip compression on the back foot right there and then he's opening up that shoulder that, that hip and throwing it up and over instead of coming up into the pocket and then throwing it downfield. So that's where you see that die on Shador Sanders a little bit there. So some lackadaisical footwork in the pocket paired with not having that sense of urgency to get all the way back and then step up into the throw takes away a touchdown on that specific play. And when you see a lot of quarterbacks throwing or not throwing the ball, why, why are they doing it into this window versus that window or not throwing it into this one? So this is where... You get to see some anticipation needing to happen for Shador Sanders. And, you know, he, like I said, I think he plays with very good timing for the most part. He gets the ball where it needs to be. He's best throwing it over the middle of the field. But this is a very simple concept against man coverage. And they're going to have the blitz come on, and he's going to not throw the football, ends up throwing this one away. I'll say this right now. I think Texas Tech, the game against Texas Tech, Texas Tech was his worst performance of the season a few weeks ago. And this is partly why. They just run a pick play down here. You have the slot receiver coming up and then kind of fading out here. And then you got Shepard coming up underneath with that spot route. And then this is exactly what they're doing here. They're going to blitz and then drop out. So you have muddied up the middle, middle of the line of scrimmage, but there's man coverage on the outside and they're on the even level right here. So you have time to make this throw exactly what you want. And Shador looks right at it too. He stops back, and he's looking right this way. This is where I want to see you throw the football. All right, you have to have that anticipation. Look where that DB is, and look where, again, Shepard is. And he's going to kind of clip. The uh, the slot receiver is going to actually clip a little bit right here. So this ball needs to be out. This needs to be out right here on time with that anticipation because if you can do that, you're going to give your receiver the ability to either make a touchdown right here and have the chance to score but you're also getting rid of the football so you're not end up ending up running around trying to make something happen when there's nothing there outside of that throw. So this is a consistent on his his film where the anticipation isn't always there. There's a few times where he'll flash that anticipation. I do think that he has the ability to do it. It's more on the consistent basis right there. You want to see this on you know on tape and watch it back and say I need to make that throw. I think he's going to be able to do that. It's going to take some time. It's not something that everyone is born with. So I think because he does have good timing on his on his tape, he does show the ability to throw based off of the defensive leverage there in some of these clips in some of his games. He does have the chance to do it. It's more about executing it properly. So this is one of the other problems that we're going to talk about right here. So we've talked about three different things where his throwing mechanics and his footwork, and then when you pair that with the anticipation, you see some of the uh, the problems in his game. And this is really more of just <laughs> pairing that anticipation with the footwork and the drifting. So when you take all of it together, 
you create some problems. Now, yes, there's a hold on this play. I understand all of that. This is a third and long situation, all right? So they're just going to run a deep route concept here. This is Shepard coming to the middle of the field. You also got another receiver taking the attention of the middle of the field. This is where the ball needs to go, right here. It needs to come on this in cut. So first of all, he's just drifting. He's not even, there's no, again, no real cadence to his drop back. If he were to get back, stop back there, and then start stepping up and looking through onto his left and throw this football now, he's going to have a throw. He's going to have, one, a throwing lane because he would have been in the pocket, not having to move at all. He would have been able to make this throw for a first down. Maybe you even don't have that flag thrown for the time that he would have been in the pocket. So, again, you see, I'm going to show you the lane where he has. If he stops right here, if he just goes straight backward, He's going to have a throwing lane appear if, if, if he would have stopped, too, right there. So he's looking, again, to his left. He's looking where he should be looking. And this underneath defender right here is moving with his eyes, right here. So imagine, again, if Shador Sanders is instead over here, where he probably should be, and then you're going to get this throwing lane that just kind of appears right here. That defender goes to his left, and this ball, if he's standing here, should be thrown right here. Because right there, or outside a little bit for it. But this throwing lane is exactly what I'm talking about. So this really should have been a completion to Sh uh, Shepard coming this way with that safety out here going towards the underneath receiver. So all of that being said, the footwork paired with some of the anticipation skills that he still flashes but doesn't do consistently take away from the overall Arm talent, I think it's better than it gets, I mean, credit for, mostly because of his mechanics and his footwork. He doesn't have an elite arm by any stretch. I think he's got a C.J. Stroud-level arm when he's playing with the anticipation and the footwork and the pocket mechanics that he has. I think he has that in his bag. But for the most part, you see throws die because of the, the footwork and the, you know, the crunching of the hips and the leaning back when he throws. So those are all teachable aspects. They're coachable points, right? The throwing mechanics he does have to work on with a, with a quarterback's coach and things like that. So I, I just think that he's got a lot more in a consistency basis if he would to show that more and use those fo the footwork and the timing and the mechanics, things like that, on a consistent basis. We probably talked a little bit better about his arm. But in, in the grand scheme, I think overall it's not as bad as, as I think some people say that it is. And a lot of it just comes back to the mechanics. This game against Kansas was maybe his best performance of the season. And I know that they scored 21 points. I know they lost this football game. And a lot of it early on, they weren't really doing a ton of this. They came out throwing the football late in the game. They had a lot of penalties creep up on them. And I think Shador played fantastic. But I was most impressed with his pocket mechanics and his ability to stay and not drift and stay in that pocket, step up in the pocket right here. Again, it's just a short drop. You've got a really, again, it's it's a tough throw to make trying to layer this to the corner, but he puts it where he needs to, and that receiver makes a fantastic play on it. So you've got the corner out here. I like what they did on this play as well. You can take the running back out to the flat. You got the corner here, then you got the spot underneath again, clearing out that, that route. And I want to give Kansas a ton of credit. They played very well in this football game, specifically from the secondary standpoint, the defensive standpoint. They were muddying things up in the back. They did a nice job passing things off. And Shador, on this one, just makes a fantastic read, fantastic play, and puts it where you need to. So there's that just window of opportunity. He steps in the pocket. You see, he's not drifting back. Like, he's not back here. He's not just running backwards. He's stepping into the pocket and making a good throw. I think this was a calculated game for him, knowing that he was going to have time in the pocket, and the pocket was going to be okay. The secondary was going to be very good, so we had to make some real throws. Again, right here, just kind of throws this over. There's no bending of the, the, the hips there. There isn't any, I'm going back, and this is going to take some time off it. He puts this exactly where it needs to be that receiver makes a great play and he puts it there right before the defender gets there. So staying in the pocket, managing it, and reading out what you're doing is, is part of the reason that I think he played so great in this football game, even if the score didn't necessarily show it. And this is another one of those pocket movements. And, and it's such a great throw. I love, I love this play call too. This is a very unique design where they're just trying to, this is a design for the running back. Okay. He is going to be on the seam route, right? But they are going to scheme it up to where 
the outside receiver is going to kind of bend this outward, draw that defend, draws defensive players away from him. The slot receiver underneath is kind of crashing hard inside. And then you get this jet motion to the flat to also move the second level defender. So you have a lot of moving parts on this play. And then the two receivers on the right hand side kind of trying to part the C's for that seam route and this is once again Shador doing a really nice job of understanding the play call re riding the fake right there to the flat and then stops right has a little bit of hop backward again it's a short drop he steps up out of the way and then just puts this on the money understands that they pass off and that defender's head is turned underneath show you that real quick again they with the crash down underneath here boom you have this slot receiver crash so they have to switch off with the seam route here so you have again a little bit of intention outside this receiver is going out here so they end up passing off with the seam route here so this defender right here ends up turning around instead of having his head in a better position because he's taking that inside receiver first and then having to switch around, right? Because the 44 drops underneath and number one goes with. And this is just Shador reading that, seeing that the defender's head is turned, putting it up for the running back to make a fantastic play. And he does. Staying in the pocket, you're going to see on this end zone, excuse me, this end zone angle where he steps up and out of the way, right? So steps up to the left, kind of puts his hand on the tackle right there and then puts this throw on the money. It's, it's a little bit underthrown. It's a little bit underthrown, but still, this is what you want to do. Take advantage of the defender's head turn, and then we're showcasing. You guys go watch this game against Kansas front to back. The pocket awareness, the manipulation, the staying in the pocket, the feeling comfortable in the pocket, all of those things flashed, and they were, it wasn't just a flash, excuse me. It was consistently there. So he had a fantastic game against Kansas, and the numbers don't really show that. And this is... Coming into more about the arm talent, we've talked about the deficiencies with the arm talent, right? I think when you take away, a, you know, when you look at throwing mechanics from a raw perspective, if you're playing reaction reactionary, that's where you're going to pretty much have the best mechanics, right? He's right here backing up a little bit, and he stops and has to set his feet really quick, and it's more of a trigger. So this one comes out, again, it's a little over, but because it's more of a trigger throw, he gets a slight quarter slot to it so it's not all the way over it's a little bit angled so that elbow comes in a little bit more right here so this one it flicks out of his hand instead of coming up and over that's what i like to see from it the footwork was good it puts on right where it needs to again he's trying to make a throw where he's moving backwards so you're naturally going to have some of that uh velocity come off of it but the reaction throw right there look at where he's his footwork look where his feet are pointing exactly to the throw he's got good hips here his arm again it's not necessarily over it's a little bit more to the that, that arm angle comes out just a little bit more and it's 100 percent flicked it's not just over follow through with the arm and the shoulder it was much more of a flick so there's again some arm talent there i think that when he works maybe a little bit more on the three-quarter slot, which I do think you see some of these guys that come in that are arm over, they do have to work on that to be able to, one, take some uh, take some reps off your shoulder. You're helping easing that a little bit, but it naturally creates more velocity, more spin, revolutions, and things like that, which helps cut through wind, and that's what you're really looking for, looking for. For a guy like Shador, whose arm tends to come off a little bit more because of that overarm, if you work that three-quarter slot, I think you can really cut through some more of the wind and help that velocity maintain throughout the throw. So we know that he can escape. He's probably not as good of an athlete as he thinks he is. I think he's still a better athlete than he gets credit for, specifically from uh, some, some people saying that he's just not that great of an athlete. Again, he's been doing much better work this season, getting out of the pocket, and also scrambling recognizing when to scramble i think he's done a really good job of of recognizing that this season and taking advantage of that with his legs this is one of the most impressive throws i saw from him again they got a blitz coming he's gonna stop there's no one open immediately so he comes out to his right this <laughs> this again this throw out to the right hand side in front of that defender just in front of the receiver it hits him on the hand this is a layered well-placed football again with some velocity on the move right there it goes behind the defender to the receiver so 
there's tools here. There's a lot more, I think, again, from the arm perspective than he gets that credit for. But at the end of the day, the things that make him the number one quarterback for me is the pocket management, the showcasing, I think, against Kansas that he had been drifting too much. That That's more of a coachable point, right? Where he's seeing it on tape. He's executing it now on the field. And that game was very impressive from, from that angle. He's got the accuracy to all levels of the field, whether the arm dies a little bit at times, the throwing mechanics are there to be able to make it better, but he's got some things to work on. We talked a little bit about his footwork, you know, the, the drifting and the arm slot. I think he's going to work on that as well. So all things considered from a defensive recognition standpoint, I think he checks that box. I do think he's got good enough arm talent. He checks that box for me. Pocket movement awareness is there as well. Again, he still thinks sometimes he can make plays that he can't, but I don't think he's a bad athlete and any stretch and plus the growth as a scrambler and recognizing when he can take off and get yards with his legs has been much better this season than it was before so Shador Sanders is my quarterback one in this class and again I encourage everyone to go watch the game against Kansas I was very very impressed with his pocket management and being able to step up and not just keep drifting back again that's something that you coach and you keep going after and seeing him correct that in season is really big for that type of evaluation so I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of Shador Sanders and why he is my quarterback one we did the breakdown again uh, coming off the opening game win against NDSU. This was more of a, let's look at the entire month of the last four games and see where he's at and how he's grown, some of the deficiencies. So a real breakdown of Shador Sanders. If you guys are new to the TDN channel, please hit that sub button right now, hit the like on the way out, and I'll see you guys next time.